right, let's wait a couple more minutes. And we'll get started. So the flow of this webinar, we're going to have a full um, presentation based off from, from Adam's side. It's going to be more of a functional presentation based off information of Device 42, like the core part of the piece. Um, and then from our side, we're also going to have Javier, who's going to be hopping on here in a second, who's going to be showcasing the integration between JIRA and um, Device 42. And then from there, we'll have a quick break. I'm going to have a couple polls that I'll send out um, throughout the session. And so please participate in the polls, give us feedback, and then we'll have a Kahoot. And the Kahoot is my favorite part of this whole entire webinar where we have a game show um, and I get to act like a game show host. And at the end, the winners will receive an Amazon gift card. So if you do win and participate in the Kahoot, please stay online, send me your email and your name just to make sure that we have all that together. We'll also send out a survey from SurveyMonkey, a link. And with that link, you'll be able to hop in and give us feedback, let us know how we did. Um, but at the same time, if there's any points or information that you wanna see more of, that'll help us and we'll create another webinar for sure. So with that being said, Adam, um, I think we can go ahead and get started if you wanna go with your presentation and then we'll go into the Device 42 demo and then the integration with JIRA to show how we can take asset management connected with our incidents and changes and everything connected inside JIRA service management. And then we'll go forward. Perfect. All right, so thanks, Eric. Um, what I'll start with is just a, a quick overview on, on what Device 42 is as a, as a company and a software product. So effectively, Device 42 is a software product that does IT discovery. And so we use agentless discovery to find out everything about an IT environment, bring a deep inventory of that environment and make it available to the team working in that environment, and then use that data to pass through our algorithms to understand the dependencies. And those dependencies could be at the physical layer, talking about the cabling and how things are wired together, uh, all the way up into the applications and showing how custom applications work together, what their dependencies are, and all sorts of information about those. So this leads to quite a few different use cases, like Eric mentioned, very much around that asset management, change management functionality is a major piece of what we do, and we do that very well with JIRA. But we also have uh, opportunities around the ability to train, change the environment. So whether it's any type of transformation, any type of hardware refresh, software refresh, you're moving to a cloud provider, or you're moving out of a data center, or you just have steady state activities you need to do for on a day-to-day -day basis around break fix, planning your changes, or you know the auditor comes knocking and you have to provide all this data for PCI compliance, things like that. You have a great data set about your environment. Everything's well understood, uh, well recognized, and then all the data is in a centralized place that you can report on easily. Now, as far as what Device 42 can discover, it's an incredibly broad discovery system. So really any iteration of compute for the past 30 years or so, so all your different Windows flavors going back to Windows 2000, Windows NT, to modern day iterations of Server 2019, Windows 11, all the different Linux flavors, whether it's Red Hat, it's Ubuntu, it's Debian, to any of the Unix or legacy systems like Solaris, AIX, uh, mainframes, AS400s, all those types of compute platforms. And we do the same thing on the network side. So whether it's a, a router a switch, a load balancer, fabric switch, anything in software defined networking, we're gonna discover those systems, show you how they work together in their dependencies, as well as the hypervisor level. So whether it's a VMware hypervisor, it's Hyper-V, it's KVM, or it's a container-based system like Kubernetes, device where you can discover those, as well as all the cloud providers. So really covering any major cloud provider, you know, your typicals you're going to expect like AWS and Azure and GCP, but also really round out the entire environment by understanding the probably one of the more closed systems in an IT environment, which is storage. So this is a notoriously uh, tough platform to get visibility to unless you are a storage administrator. Device 42 can discover all the storage arrays in that environment help you understand the capacity of those arrays, the different ways in which they're configured from the data stores, the LUNs, the volumes, as well as the server mappings. And, and that's usually a tough piece is to figure out 
for a particular storage array, who's using that array? What servers and, and how are they using it? And this is a great way to show and share that information across the IT teams. Now, this isn't a shallow discovery by any means. So we go very deep into each one of those boxes, really diving into understand everything about those systems. So we're going to get all the typical physical and virtual attributes about them, all the information about operating systems and software and services, as well as anything about the custom applications. So things that have been developed in-house in your organization, we're going to help you understand, understand their topology, their architecture, and then pull in all that information together in a meaningful way. Now, that sounds great, but how do we do it? So for device 42, well, the most important thing to understand is that it is an agentless discovery. So there's not a need to deploy software all over the place. You don't have to set up network taps or span ports or anything crazy like that. But it all happens from a virtualized appliance in your environment. So there's no communications out to the outside world, no communications to the public internet. You don't have to send this all to a centralized SaaS system. Everything stays local in your environment and operates uh, in a very structured and scalable way. So we do have these remote collectors that can be strategically deployed, typically one per data center as a way to scale out device 42. And they can also be deployed in more hardened sections of the network, secure zones, things like that, where you don't want to open up you know, firewall rules. You can instead deploy a remote collector locally within that network, and it'll run discovery there, and then give you the ability to get that data out of that environment into the main appliance just on a single encrypted port. Now to touch on some of the features that are most popular with device 42, Application dependency mapping is, is probably our, our most popular feature. This is the ability to understand the custom applications in the environment, how they uh, break down. So what are the components, the processes, the services that make up these applications and visualize those applications topology in a way that is meaningful and helps your organization, your support teams, your change planning teams uh, understand the application and make sense of it. And so it really helps drive down things like MTTR, get to faster root cause analysis, help people who are trying to transform an application or modernize it, because you can understand the way it works as it is today, and then use that information to plan for tomorrow. Now, all of this happens in, that, in still using that agentless discovery. So we still don't need an agent. You don't have to uh, configure anything, injecting code into the JVMs or anything crazy like that. It all happens just with that agentless touch of, of the servers in the environment. The next piece is around storage discovery. So like I said, storage has historically been a very uh, closed platform and a closed system that usually only storage administrators are getting viewpoints into. And this is a great way to help democratize that information and share it broadly across the organization. So with storage discovery, you're going to see the details of those storage arrays. You're going to see the capacity. You're going to see the different volumes, the LUNs, the shares, the disks even, uh, for how that storage array is set up. And then you can use that data to understand how it's being consumed by the servers around it, as well as report on the, the storage itself. And then the last major feature I'll talk about before we jump in the tool is around resource utilization. So this is a helpful way to understand the CPU, memory, disk, and network statistics in the environment and capture that data on an ongoing basis for capacity management, trending, as well as transformation migration projects. So you can capture all this data and use the Device42 Cloud Recommendation Engine to get right-sized uh, cloud instance recommendations based on the servers that you have running in your environment. So this is a great way to know exactly what it would cost if I were to pick up a group of servers or an application or an entire data center and drop it in AWS, how much would that cost to actually run? Does that make sense to do for our business? You can see all those details and most importantly, see it in a right-sized manner. So it's not just how are they sized today, but based on what they're actually using, what should they be sized for? What cloud instance should they pick? And what's that gonna cost? So like I said, a great way to, to get some predictability before you uh, consider a cloud migration or you know start to work on one. 
So really to wrap up on the slides and we'll jump in the tool, uh, Device 42 is an incredibly broad solution that's designed to consume as much data as possible about the environment. So we're between the data we're getting from the agentless discovery, any data we're getting from APIs around the system, from various tools and platforms, or just custom data you're pushing to us, Device 42 is going to consume all of that, deduplicate it, and then give you the ability to have better management of your environment. So whether it's the day-to-day -day activities around planning your changes, recovering from outages, or you're trying to uh, be in compliance with PCI or uh, FedRAMP or any type of requirements or audit compliance you need to, or you just want to be able to you know, have automation capabilities because you have Device 42 with a robust API that has all the details about your environment. You can query it through the REST API and get all sorts of information you need to build out really smart automation. All right, so I will now bring up the Vice 42 interface so we can kind of see all this uh, magic, I'll say, I've been, I've been talking about. Before that, I'm gonna send out a poll here. We'll do the asset tracking poll. So I'm gonna launch this poll. If you guys have a chance, please take a quick minute, respond. And with that, we'll be able to go into the next round. I'll share the re responses here in a second. So it's what are you using in an environment to track your assets, spreadsheets, ServiceNow, BMC, Insight, which is a part of Atlassian Jira, and then nothing we are not tracking. And I'll close it here in five, four, three, two, one. Rodion, that's a great question. I should have put device 42 inside here. You get extra points. That's my that's my fail. And then here's the results. So you can see that we've got quite a percentage of people using spreadsheets. Um, I put spreadsheets instead of spreadsheets, but ServiceNow and then Insight, and then a lot of people are not tracking. So with that being said, thanks, Powell. Um, I'll note that as well. So there is quite a few people here who are using device 42 um, on this piece. And so I appreciate it. So go ahead, Adam, with your second part. And we've got another poll here in about 15 minutes. Great. So like I said, um, this is the interface of device 42. So this is what you see when you first log in. And for some folks who are using device 42 today, hopefully you're using the, the latest version because these dashboards keep getting better. And this is something we're working on this year. So they are gonna keep getting nicer and nicer and nicer looking and more features, but it does give you some highlights about what's going on in the environment and gives you the ability to kind of at a glance, see what's going on. You also get this great search bar here. So you can search for anything that you wanna see about the environment, any, you wanna search across devices, applications, users, purchase orders, software, uh anything that's in the data store of device 42 this will search so it's like google for your environment great way to to find anything you're looking for but as far as getting data into device 42 there's many different ways that we can uh, start to understand the environment so we have discovery jobs for you know your servers we have discovery jobs for the storage arrays for the network devices for the cloud providers as well as things like certificates so device 42 has the ability to inventory all of the TLS and SSL certificates in your environment, tell you when they expire, help you set up alerts so you don't get caught flat footed and, and have a, a certificate expire and then you have a production outage because it didn't get renewed. Uh, but it also do things like find the TLS versions or the trust chain so you can track down certificates that maybe don't meet your current security standards. This is a great way to help you know, manage the nuances of your environment. But once we get data into Device 42, I'll show you a server record. So in Device 42, when you see the, the servers, what you'll notice is you're gonna get the name of the servers discovered, you'll get the type. So if it's VMware, it's a cloud server, it's a physical, it's um, a container, you'll see all of that identified here in the subtype. If it is uh, virtual, you'll see the relationship to the ESX host. So you can understand that VM to host relationship, as well as pulling any metadata tags from VMware or the cloud provider, you know, wherever we can pull that in from to help, you know, share that metadata across the different platforms. 
But then we'll get configuration information about that record. So we'll see the number of CPUs configured on this server. We'll see the speed of the CPUs. We'll see the amount of memory that's configured for the server, as well as the hard drive size. Next, we'll see the operating system details. So we can see this one is running Ubuntu 18.04, the 64-bit version. We also have some end of life details that have been populated in here. So we know what is the manufacturer's end of life for Ubuntu. And so you can set up some reports and do some uh, maintenance around that. Make sure that you are using the most uh, current and up-to-date supported operating system versions. And then the last one is around the interfaces. So this is a great way to understand the, the interfaces and the network cards on a particular server, and then what network those are part of. Next, we'll understand the software. So this is going to be your vendor software that's installed on the servers. So if you want to go look for any particular vendor software like Chef or Log4j, for example, find any of those uh, installed software pieces with the software version of that software when it was first detected, when it was last updated, all of that will be inventoried for every server and can be reported on. Now the services piece will give you information about the running processes or custom services on the server. So this will show you things like MySQL, IIS, Apache, Tomcat, those types of uh, application components. And it'll show you the details on the path arguments. It'll show you the, the current running state, what user it's running under. So you have the visibility as far as what's going on with the custom app components and the platforms they're using. Now, the last piece is around the mount points. So this is the way to understand what's the local storage on this server? What's the network attached storage? So if there's any shares, any volumes, any NFS that's mounted here, we'll see all that inventoried with the capacity details, the file system details. So you have a full understanding of how this server is consuming any storage that it's using, and you can report on that too. So if you want to watch for capacity utilization, you have those levels of, of details available right there. Now, from a application perspective, we do understand the server in uh, the broader view of its applications. And so we can see how a server is using other resources around it and what applications it's doing that with. So on the left side, we'll see this global view of the server to server communication. But on the right hand side, we're gonna see a detailed view of exactly what's going on with this server and any services it's using. So each box here is a server. And then within the server, you'll see green dots representing the services that we saw in that last view that are running on the server and are communicating externally from the server. So for example, we see this MySQL process that's communicating, looks like it's on port 3306. We can see all the details about the worker IP address, what user it's running under, and also that it's communicating with this Tomcat server. And so if we want to see this relationship expanded and see what happens once we communicate into this Tomcat server, we can expand that and see that it looks like it goes from Tomcat to Apache. And see here, we also got another server here that's more Apache. So it looks like a typical, you know, web server. So we have a web server that's communicating with an app server that's communicating with a database server. Now, this is a great way to understand these custom applications and the resources they're using, but it, it is a little time consuming to expand those relationships. And you're also going to see a lot of nuance. You're going to see a lot of details since this is more of that engineering view about here's the SSH traffic, here's your monitoring, your backups, all of that would get shown in this view. And that's really why we have created something called affinity groups. Now, affinity groups give you that same viewpoint that we just saw, but we filtered out a lot of the noise. So we automatically expanded the relationships. So you don't have to do that for every node, but filtered out things like SSH and monitoring and backups and all that kind of stuff that isn't typically application centric. And we're just showing you the, the nodes that make sense for this application. So we still see our MySQL server here at the bottom. We can click on the link in between any of these nodes to see details about it, that that connection is initiated from a Java process to the Tomcat server. And then we can do the same thing for this other Tomcat server. See, all right, so we see it come from this D42 process to MySQL. And all of this is also on a timeline. So if we want to jump back in time to see you know, what it looked like in December or October, we can see how the application's topology has changed in that time period and see what's going on. Now, Device 42 does 
a lot of other really cool stuff. So we have this concept of the asset management in the physical presence. So we have concept of buildings, rooms, and racks. And this allows you to physically track your assets in the data center or in your uh, office building, any colo spaces, and manage its physical location to the overall environment. So this is a great way to, to keep track of things, as well as assign it to a particular location with asset tags, serial numbers, and you can build out the rooms in that building, the office space, say you have a data center room, you can populate it with all the racks in that data center. So you have all those identified with this number of uh, use in that rack, how many devices are configured there, details on the PDUs and the UPSs, and also keep track of all the assets in that room with the serial numbers, the asset tags, so you know where all the spare parts are, the spare devices, and you know exactly which ones are in what room and what location. And we'll also visualize all this. So we give you a room layout view. Now this is a bird's eye view of that room. So you can see hovering over this room what it looks like to uh, see the data center itself. And you'll see information about what that rack elevation looks like. So you, as you hover over each one, you can see the different servers that are populated in the rack. You can get information about, say, the sensors that are in that rack. So if we want to look at the temperature or the humidity of the servers in that rack, we can see those. And we can also get uh, detailed information by drilling down into this rack itself. So if we want to drill into this rack and see information about what are the systems that are actually racked here, we can see as we click on this one, this is a Cisco 6509E. We can see it has one module in that particular switch. And if we want, we can jump into that, into that switch record and see the details about the switch. We can see the information just like we saw for the servers. You're going to get the, the model number. We get this one's part of a cluster but you also see information about the ports. So we can see the various different fiber ports in this network switch, what their connectivity plugs into in other systems. So we can see other switches are plugged in these fiber ports. We see in fiber port nine, it goes into a server. So all of that is mapped out at the network and at the physical cabling level so that you can see how that all works together. And also another thing that we do visualize too. So you can see the, the network topology of this particular switch and see how this is um, set up. So great way to, to highlight all the different uh, network ports and where they plug into and the different devices. So like we said, fiber port nine plugs into this D42 demo server over here, but then we have other ports that plug into the switches. Now, like I said, device 42 also does a great job with understanding the storage in the environment. So if we want to look at the storage arrays and see the data that we discover about the arrays themselves, this is a good way to highlight the, the storage arrays. So you can see specifically the details for a particular storage array. So we're drilling into a NetApp. We can see the capacity for how this NetApp is configured at a raw capacity, and then look at how it's configured with thin and thick provisioning is all identified. You can see all the parameters about how it's set up and configured, including all the, those details, like I said, for the thin provisioning uh, and all the magic that the storage array manufacturers do. If they do deduplication or compression, those things would be identified in this section. But you also get that visibility to the disks in the array, you'll get visibility into the volumes with each volume's capacity identified and the amount of free space that's in that particular volume. And we do the same thing for the LUNs. So if you want to see how the LUNs are set up for the uh, ESX hosts, you can see all of the LUNs that have been identified here with their associated capacities and the free space on those. And then we'll do information in a map. So this, again, another way to visualize the data so we can see that we have all of these LUNs here, but if we expand out the LUN relationships, we can then see the connections to the servers that are configured for these LUNs and how they're consumed by the servers in that environment. And, and that way you know, you know, if there's a plan change control for the storage array, here's all the servers that are gonna be impacted if that storage array has to be restarted or rebooted or whatever uh, activity needs to take place, you know the potential blast radius for that. All right, so I think that's pretty much wrapping up, uh, you know, the major things I wanted to cover in this demo 
we're happy to do a more detailed demo for any folks who are interested. We're just scratching the surface of the things that Device 42 can cover. Um, so I'll turn it back over to Eric and we can uh, get another poll. Perfect, Adam, thanks. And so we kind of segued right into this next poll, which is about the storage array. And then we also have a question. We'll answer that here in a minute. Um, but as we start kind of moving over into Javier's piece, so bit to bit Americas, we're partners of Device42. We're also Platinum Enterprise Partners of Atlassian. And so the question always becomes, why are we discussing asset management without using the Atlassian products that come out? So it's, it, the key that Adam said at the beginning was focused on discovery. So what Device42 can do in a complex environment and bring that data in without having issues is the key component of, of, of this whole entire process. So once we can discover information, then we can bring it in back into a tool like Jira Service Management, for example, which we're going to hit with Javier in a second. But um, I think that's one of the biggest components of, of, of this is focusing on complex discoveries. If you're on-prem, multi-cloud, everything that you have related, we can take that information. And from a Jira cloud side, because if everybody here is on, on the call is anything related to Atlassian, on Jira service management, there's premium that includes insight. There's standard that does not include insight. And then there's the data center side. So for us, the question always becomes, what is your component connected to discovery? How complex is your environment? If you have you know, 50 servers, it's one thing. If you have 10,000 devices that we're gonna to connect to and across the globe, you're probably gonna want device 42. And then we can take that data and integrate it into Jira service management, um, which is an inter interesting piece. And Javier is gonna talk about that here in a second, but I'll end this poll right now and share the results. So it looks like pure storage, Dell EMC tied for the lead, um, and then a bunch of other. All right, so that's the last poll. We're gonna go into a quick demo of the integration between device 42 with Jira service management from Javier. After that, I'll send out a quick survey link uh, for the Kahoot, and then also send out the link for the Kahoot so we can get started on that. So Javier, I'll pass it over to you. And you're in mute. I think on the Zoom side, you're in mute. Yep. There we go. There we go. All right. I hear you. You're good. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. So here we are looking at data service management. As Eric mentioned, this is a a uh, service desk tool, you can implement ITS in process or any kind of services really where we can have uh, incidents, uh, change requests, service requests, etc. And uh, as Eric mentioned, one of the key strengths with Device 42 is the discovery part where we can automatically discover all of these uh, devices, software, uh, and also the link between them as uh, uh, Adam talked about before this that will help us with this. Uh, for example, if we're doing an update on a server and we need to know which services will be impacted or if we are uh, having an incident in one of our, in our infrastructure to understand which other systems or services could be impacted, uh, the discovery and especially the uh, dependency mapping that device 42 give us can empower these uh, kind of processes. So you can integrate device 42 with uh, either version of Jira, I, I mean in Jira cloud or data center uh, version. In this case, we're looking at the cloud version, but uh, all of these features that we, I will show you today will, are also available on the server version. This is a free plugin. You will just need to have a license on both systems and then install the uh, marketplace app for the integration. And once you set it up, you will be able to link uh, these devices. So let's, for example, report a problem here in our uh, service desk. This is our end customer view. They will be reporting a system incident, for example. Uh, let's see, we have a problem with a database. Uh, we can also implement uh, affected services. For example, Jira, <laughs> it's been affected here. And uh, some of the uh, additional fields, these are all customizable on the Jira side. But the important here is this one. This is the linked assets that will be uh, interacting with all of the discovered uh, devices on the device for sites. And we can uh, search here for uh, 
a one specific asset, and we can map it this to one or even multiple assets. Uh, this can be done either on the, uh, as we are looking right now on the customer portal, or as we will, uh, we will be seeing later also from the uh, technician uh, view, the service A and view. So let's move here something. And the cool part here is that uh, once we do that, we will have all the uh, discover all the uh, information that device 42 have uh, gathered inside these uh, linked assets fields. So this let us, uh, uh, this, the, this, this let us uh, see all of the related information. And let me go down here. So uh, I uh, and I will say this piece is cloud. So there is a different interface that con connected within a cloud version versus a data center or server version. And so from the Atlassian side, if anybody here is actually a customer of Atlassian, connect with us. We can help you um, understand the difference. The majority of Atlassian is moving towards the cloud data center will still be a viable product. Um, the integration between device 42 on the cloud side and the data center side is still going to be connected, um, but it's something that we can help you all with. So just keep a, keep that in mind. Yeah, and, and as I was mentioning, the important thing is that we can get all the information discovered all by uh, device 42 here. Uh, this is customizable. And if we want to look into additional information, we can just click here and it will give us back to uh, the device uh, 42 uh, user interface will look at, take a look at the additional information and look at all the dependency mappings and application mappings that uh, uh, we were talking before. The other interesting thing is what we can do that uh, either way. So as I mentioned, some use case where, for example, we need to know which other devices or services depend on this impacted uh, MySQL database in this case. But uh, we also can do it the other way around. So for example, we are having a specific uh, device that's having several problems. We can take a look at all of the uh, tickets created in uh, Jira service management to see if there's any change that was implemented before or any update uh, or you know previous incidents. So we can take a look at a uh, root cause that is having this issue. And also from the device 42 side, we are able to create those uh, same tickets we just need to uh, select the project here, and we will be able to create a ticket from this interface also. So let's do that. So that way you can integrate all of the uh, uh, discoverable uh, abilities from device 42 with uh, Jira service management uh, portal. Uh, you know, in the in the also in the way of customization, uh, we can set up using a docker that is device forty two uh, query language similar to JQL for the ones from comes from Jira uh, to you know restrict what kind of information it's available to link uh, in these assets. So if we want just to uh, restrict this to databases or applications of our servers, for example, we can do that uh, using this query language. Great, so we also have a question, and I think this is gonna be directed more towards Adam. It's so what's the option to track undiscoverable pieces like patch panel management and such? Yeah, so those are, are uh, what we call just generically assets. So things like patch panels or um, like breaker panels, mice, keyboards, monitors, you can track in device 42 as assets. And those uh, don't count towards your licensing, but you can also, you know, upload those via spreadsheets, via the API, or, or manually categorize them in, in the device 42 tool. Great. And so one of the biggest pieces here also on the Jira service management side is the focus of connect, connecting services also connected to assets 
And then there's, when you do have a Jira service management and Javier, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about this. I think it'd be great. Um, talking about the component of ops genie that's connected inside for incident management, major incident management, because all of these tools can actually play together. And so if you want to give like a, you know, quick, quick rundown of, of that, that story, right? So we've connected and scanned this whole entire network, cloud, on-prem, everything coming from device 42. And we're sitting here as an incident team or a knock one um, type group and going through these assets. Like how can we actually deliver business value quicker using Jira service management connected with device 42? Uh, yeah, so one of the use cases, as you mentioned, will be incident management. If we are talking about major incident management, where uh, uh, this will need, for example, a service a restoration team working here, we can uh, integrate this with uh, solutions like Ops Genie, where we can have uh, on-call teams uh, associated with specific services. For example, in this case, we are talking about some affected services related to the specific uh, devices. Then we can uh, look into uh, our old call scale where uh, we can set up who is in uh, assign it on our service restoration team or DevOps team or different doctor team. And uh, through uh, Ops Genie, we can start automate, automating the notifications to this team. And here we are talking about uh, on call uh, voice. Uh, notification, text, messaging, depending on when you need, and also escalation. So if this, for example, is a critical service where uh, we need to, uh, uh, we have a specific SLAs because the end user experience could be severely affected, or this is part of a business critical process, we can start escalating this uh, either to inside the same team or to different teams. It also allow us to start, uh, Adam was talking about automation in the, uh, at the beginning of the presentation, we can also through Ops Genie uh, start automation scripts to resolve these incidents. For example, restarting some services or uh, integrating with tools like uh, Chef or uh, Puppet to restore some uh, misconfiguration or the specific scripts uh, to try to do a self-healing process. So that's also part of uh, the integration we can drive to these uh, uh, kind of solutions. All right, so does anybody have any questions additional? I think we have one more here in the Q&A. Now's the time to kind of do that because we're going to move over towards the, I'm going to send out the survey link and then start the Kahoot here in a little bit. But we have one question here from Ken. Does the application support barcode scanning for manual entry, removal of assets if needed? Yeah, so the way that Device42 supports uh, barcode or QR code scanning is through, um, after the device has been discovered, you can assign a QR code. So you would go into the tool itself and generate the QR code for that device. And then there's printer stickers that we work with, or you can print out a whole sheet of them and slap it onto the device, whether it's a server, switch, or a laptop. And then in the after you've printed it, you just scan it with your camera or a barcode reader, and it would bring you to that device record on your phone so you could see exactly the details of that, that um, device that you're working with. Perfect. And then we also have Two more questions. One is related to, is there a way to track owners for the services? Who is the ownership of that service? And a person, either a person or maybe a group? Yeah, I, application ownership is is available um, and something you can track under the business apps feature. Uh, so Javier, if you wanna go up to the top there and go to uh, applications and business apps. Applications, uh, business yep, application. right there. And you can pick uh, any of those just to jump into one. But what you'll see is the ability to identify the application owner, the department, and then also other metadata, things that aren't typically discoverable because the servers and the applications don't know who the human person is that works with them. This is all things that are, are metadata about your environment and how the, your applications are configured. 
So this is the place where you can set all that, categorize it. It can either be manually inputted or you can um, upload it through spreadsheets or through the API. So lots of different ways to get all this data loaded in here. Great, we also have another one is, are there any parameters that can indicate application ownership in the application lifecycle? But then we also have the other question, is there any PagerDuty integration? So the PagerDuty integration, yes, we do. We have the ability to integrate PagerDuty with webhooks in Device 42. So pretty much any event, I'll say generically, that happens in Device 42 can trigger a PagerDuty alert. Um, and, and we have several customers who do that pretty extensively as a way to keep track of either certain software they don't want to have, capacity, uh, certificates that are expiring, all, all that kind of uh, categories of events that would be impacting to the environment into production. As far as the first question around any types of things that would indicate application ownership, not typically, not anything I've seen. I, I've never seen, um, you know, an application kind of have that human level assignment done before. Um, but if, if there are things that are set up in, in a customer's environment that do indicate that, I think we'd be curious to see that and see what that looks like. Great. So I think the questions are done. Um, let us know how you liked the webinar that we just did. If there's any information specifically on the Device 42 side, uh, we can uh, have another webinar connected to either power management or software license management. There's lots of modules and lots of things that we can go deep, do a deeper dive in. At the same time, um, even on the Atlassian side. So if you're using Jira service management or a tool you want to integrate Device 42 with, we can focus on that as well. So any feedback would be would be amazing. I appreciate everybody's time. I've got the three different individuals who won. And with that, we're going to close out the uh, the webinar. So thank you, Adam, from the Device 42 side. Thank you, Javier, here from the bit to bit side. Um, it was a great webinar, and I, I thank everybody for their time participating. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks, everyone. All right, y'all. Peace out. Have a good good rest of the week and a great weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye.